Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Cell Block Scorch. It is Cricket here to record week 31 um, speedrun version because it is past my bedtime, but I gotta get this done. <laughs> the prompt was given by Lost, and it was the song Still Fill by Half Alive, which is linked in our transcript. Go watch the video, it's interesting, and the song is just like a chill, cool bop. My piece is entitled Center of Gravity. The words were still rattling around her brain when she woke up, something her friends had said the night before. I bet it's easy for you. <laughs> like, you could just float away. They had been laughing, joking, but she couldn't get those words out of her head. She shut off her alarm, glancing around her bedroom as she tossed her legs over the side of the bed and stood up, stretching. She ran a hand through her hair, pushing the locks out of the way of her face as she went to sit down in the middle of her rug. She turned on her fan, crossed her legs, closed her eyes, and breathed in, letting her thoughts swirl. Sure, I could just float away. It's easy for them to say. They don't know what it's really like. That sometimes I feel so disconnected from my family or my friends, my goals, or even the world as a whole. It's hard. I knew going to this school was going to be tough. But nobody expected everything that happened this year, the moments that were an absolute nightmare. Sometimes it would have been easier to just float away than it was to stay and fight, but I did. She inhaled deeply, eyes closed, a serene expression on her face belying the turmoil within her, a conflicting sea of emotions that she tried to keep under control. Some of her classmates thought it was silly that she meditated every day, but she knew she needed it. So there she was, relishing the feel of the air on her face, floating in the middle of her bedroom, realigning herself. I'm fighting all the time. They know that, right? Even if I'm not just like them, I come from somewhere different. So I'm the only one who doesn't have a smartphone. They don't get it, and they won't. But they don't hold it against me either. She tried not to be bitter about the things that separated her from her friends, but it had been weighing on her mind lately. They'd all gone shopping, and some of her friends had spent more money on one shirt than she would spend on two outfits. They had laughed and told her not to be so stingy, not to worry about it, but she couldn't help it. So what if my main motivation is to make money? I mean, of course I want to help people, but mostly I want to give my parents a better life. They deserve it. I miss them. They feel so far away now that I'm living here on campus in the dorms. We talk all the time, but still, it's not the same as having dad's home-cooked meals and mom asking how my day has been. And this bedroom is nice, sure, and my things are here, but it's not mine yet. She felt herself starting to tear up, to stress out, and willed herself to be calm. Subconsciously, she began rocking gently side to side, finding the motion soothing. It was good practice, too, for keeping her balance, keeping control. Keeping balance, she focused on that thought as she rocked. Keeping balance. But it can be so easy to spiral out of control when you can't feel the gravity. When nothing holds you down, what keeps you here? She could just picture her friends' faces if she asked them these questions, reveal her constant existential crisis. They wouldn't know what to do with her. I get lost so easily. Yes, I could just float away, but then... You're amazing. I definitely wouldn't call that girl frail. She's come this far. You'll make a kind, caring hero one day. I am so proud of you. You're amazing. <laughs> there it was. A smile grew on her face as the words of her friends, teachers, parents came back to her. That's why I don't. They believe in me, and I can't let them down. She leaned back and back and back until she was hanging upside down with the tips of her hair brushing the floor as her toes pointed at the ceiling. And I believe in myself. I'm going to be better. I'll keep working hard. I've been working hard. Nobody thought I could fight, but I've been proving them wrong. They saw at the sports festival, and I learned so much in my internship. Plus, I Island and that incident at summer camp, I showed them then, and I'll keep showing them. She swayed back and forth, hair swishing on the carpet as she replayed those battles in her mind. I did it by myself. I was inspired by everyone around me, but it was me. I did my best, and I'll keep doing my best. She always came back to that. 
Her friends and her family kept her grounded, but it was her own desires that provided her center of gravity. Another alarm went off, alerting her to the fact that her half hour had passed, but she remained where she was, suspended in the middle of her room. A few minutes went by, and then there was a knock at the door. Yeah, come in, she called out. The door opened slowly, and Sue peeked in. Oh, Chaco, are you coming to eat breakfast? Upon seeing her friend, she asked, Um, why are you upside down? Uraraka laughed awkwardly. Oh, just meditating. She swung back and forth a few times until she had the momentum to tip right side up again, extending her legs as she released her cork to land on the ground. I'm coming, thanks. As she joined Sue, her friend had one finger on her bottom lip, which Uraraka knew meant she was curious. What are you wondering, Sue? Do you always meditate upside down? I've never actually seen you. She looked ahead, apparently vacantly, but Uraraka knew she was earnest. Ah, no. <laughs> Just sometimes to practice. And today, I needed to figure something out. What was that? They were nearing the kitchens then, and she smiled as she saw her friends cooking and eating, talking and laughing. <laughs> My center of gravity. <laughs> This piece is so fun. Reading this back over was like, man, what a vibe. I probably wrote this because I had just watched whatever My Hero Academia was current summer of 2018. I had just gotten caught up. I was like reading the manga. And like, I love Uraraka. I think she's such an interesting character. She's so cool. I just think she's a she's such an interesting contrast to a lot of the other kids that were in the hero course for like her motivations and things and I love how I don't know she's just like she does the things that she needs to do and she like works so hard and she's so cool so I probably I assume that's why I had this on the brain and also the song just like has this vibe um a lot of the tone of this piece and like the thoughts that she has are actually really related to the lyrics of the song still feel like I feel like once I had the idea to connect that song to Uraraka it just like it fits so well um permanent permanent addition to the Uraraka character playlist that I've never made but if I were to make it this song would be there I really wish Lost were around to give her her thoughts on this one because is interesting and alas as i have previously mentioned i do not have the text chain from six years ago when we were talking about the scorch previously so um you will just have to know that uh lost chose me this week and i was really happy with it i worked i put a lot of effort into this one <laughs> oh no this is when i did that Oh my gosh. Okay. My prompt for week 32 was... Buckle up, folks. It's a doozy. My prompt for week 32 was... Write me a pantheon. You must involve at least one major god by appearance, two major gods by mention, two minor gods and or two mortals by appearance, or one of each. That's cool. Go crazy. I don't care if it's fandom-based or of your own invention. Just write me godly shenanigans. Write me a pantheon. I just think that, like, I don't know, stories with gods and pantheons and mortals are, like, so interesting and compelling, and this is one of those, like, you know, be the change you want to see in the world, but, like, demand the stories that you want to exist, because what's the point of having a writing competition with your friends if not to make them write exactly the thing that you want to read that week? So I hope you all look forward to that. The pieces I got were so good. <laughs> Keep those fires burning. The Cellblock Scorch is a production of Stellacor, an independent group of nerds sharing their obsessions with the world. We can be reached at thestellacor at gmail.com through comments on your podcast platform of choice, our Instagram, Stella underscore core, and at our YouTube, also called Stellacor. Feel free to check out our other productions on our YouTube channel or our cosplays on Instagram. If you would like to support our creative endeavors, you can give a one-time tip to the Ko-Fi of the writer of your favorite Scorches, or check out our Patreon, linked in the show notes. There, you can access the winning Scorches and episode transcripts for free, or sign up for Spark Level support for $5 a month, 
to gain access to all of the Scourge submissions.